Hello everyone! Finally, the moment that we all had been waiting for has finally came, and the first part of episode 72 got released just a few hours ago. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the details and easter eggs that I managed to find, and let me give you some spoilers already. There was just a ton of different references and comebacks for the characters we haven't seen for a literal eternity already. Who is the POV of today's episode, and how did he manage to get on track after such a long wait? What was G-Man doing on the battlefield considering how he was supposed to leave already? And who are his fellow Skibidi we all thought were dead, but as it turned out, they are still here with us? And most importantly, what did the leader of Astro Toilets has said to G-Man, and what's going to happen to them in the next episode? And what was the hidden reference towards Elite Cameraman that was left by Boom somewhere in this episode? So if you want to find every secret in the episode, then get your tea and snacks ready because it's gonna blow your mind for sure. Let's go! So the episode starts with the last image that was on the camera of our comrade Plungerman by the end of episode 70 before it got shut down. And then we are getting shown the familiar words, camera offline. But this time, we're not going to get transferred to the cameraman's facility from the ending of the full 70th episode, and instead we're getting into shoes of another POV, and oh my god guys, what do you think who he might possibly be? Who could have controlled such a complicated exosuit with ease, the design of which reminds me a bit of the robotic suits from the movie called Avatar, by the way? You guessed it right, my friends. This is my forever favorite buddy Mecha Scientist cameraman. And we haven't seen him in the series since episode 54. And even the description under the Booms video spoils this information to us as it says, Cameraman Scientist receives reinforcements. Let me have my own tiny moment of this character's appreciation because I really expected him to appear in the Skibidi Toilet universe very soon, but I still cannot believe that my dreams came out to be true so quickly. Now it's up for Simp Cameraman and Plunger Man to hurry up and re-emerge in this series epically as well. And then the nature will definitely heal itself and the world will experience a feeling of never-ending peace. But let's get back to the episode, and by the way, do you see what's being written on Mecha Scientist's tablet near the words camera offline? It's Cameraman Scientist 1337. And I got really curious what those numbers could have meant. Usually Boom uses them to hint to one of the episodes that were somehow connected to the owner of these numbers. In episode 13, we saw the camera spider robot for the first time, so I think it counts. But I'll explain why a little bit later, so watch this video to the end not to miss anything. And in episode 37, we saw the big cameraman scientist using the prototype of the anti-parasite cannon in action, and the development of such a weapon belonged to Mecha scientist exactly. So could it be a hint towards the Mecha's magnum opus, and an indication that the upgraded anti-parasite cannon may return? I'm not really sure about that, but what I'm more confident in is that the whole row of numbers 1337 can refer to the internet language for gamers which is pronounced like Leet or Elite. And of course this is an undeniable reference towards the channel of Elite Cameraman who's often communicating with Boom. That was a really clever thing to do, I'm not gonna lie. There was another detail that got my attention. You guys must remember how Mecha Scientist was dressed in the traditional white suit, as all scientists are. But in this frame, we can see how one of his sleeves is white, and another one is more of a violet or purple color. So I immediately remembered the POV in the purple suit from episode 71, but then I remembered about the color theory scheme and the unfamous blue and black dress, so then I understood that it was all just a play of lighting, and our buddy Mecha Scientist is still dressed in white and not in purple. He then punches the panel with his fist in frustration and anger, as Plunger Man was still comrade after all and they were in a few battles together, covering each other's backs. So I understand his feelings perfectly, and it seems to me that we're facing somebody's meltdown almost every episode. Before that, it was Plungerman himself with his emotional conflict with the Dark Speaker Man, and now it's time for another character to bear such powerful emotions. Then he looks upwards, and we see the scenery that was shown to us in one of the leaks that Boom published in his Discord channel yesterday. The POV Mecha immediately glances to the left, and we see how the Skibidi who was hiding behind this bricked building was not actually the upgraded Skibidi helicopter from the first Discord leak as I thought earlier, but the Skibidi mutant with the police shield. So apparently the second and the third leaks were happening in different time, but let's move on. So the Skibidi police mutant releases a few rocket missiles that hit the car that served as a cover for this poor cameraman, and of course he did not survive such a blow. 
In order to avenge his fallen comrade, the POV Mecha raises up two of his huge exoguns and releases two smashing bright red lasers, which makes me think that the new weapons he's got are an even more threatening and powerful version of the plasmic minigun from the POV Big Cameraman in the first part of Episode 70. It seems like the red plasmic guns are all the rage amidst the soldiers of the Alliance nowadays, don't you guys agree with me? It's interesting how the previous dart shooting cannons from Mecha's exosuit in episode 54 were replaced with these bad boys, so apparently the combat power of these cannons is indeed much higher. In another shot, the Mecha POV deals with this obnoxious Skibidi mutant, and I've got a really funny detail in the background. Do you see this lonely tree standing somewhere in the distance surrounded by flames? This kind of tree is called Sequoia, and this is another really smart reference by Boom to yet another Skibidi creator who has the channel with the same title. Boom is really killing it with references recently, and this is not even the end, so keep watching. And by the way, to the left from this crazy-looking mutant, you can see the same upturned toilet that we already saw in one of the leaks, but this time he has an actual face, and its expression is pretty wild. It seems like the bro had an amazing time right before he got knocked out for good. So the POV Mecha knocks this little prick down with one punch of his steel fist, and in addition burns his butt, and you should remember this frame as it will be useful for us later. He then deals with another mutant who's dressed in the military form. The prick tries to saw the Mecha's head off his body, but our Chad doesn't seem to want to repeat the similar fate he had in episode 48, so he uses his wonderful panel once more and pierces the mutant's head throw with the giant metal spike on his right robotic hand and then throws him away as a piece of garbage. And by the way, do you guys see this tank in the distance? It would be really cool to see it in action when it was still useful. Meanwhile, the mutant gets up on his feet already and I cannot help but really wonder how the heck was he so robust and hardy. The mutants seem to be the real terminators of the Skibidi Toilets world and they seem to be a real danger now. Well, the POV Mecha does everything that he should in this case meaning that he's destroying all things that move in front of him using his awesome plasmic cannons. And you just look at this scene. So many hidden gems were left here for us by Boom, so let's look at everything with more patience. First of all, do you see this dude in the center of the screen walking towards us menacingly with two axes in his hands? It seems like he's doing a cosplay of our Chad Plungerman who walked in the exact same way in episode 50 that was later replicated by the big cameraman in episode 53. God damn it, guys. Plungerman became a real legend, not only for the Alliance soldiers, but for the members of the Skibidi army as well. And this is yet another sign for me that he should definitely come back because as you know, the legends never die. Secondly, in the air you can see this mysterious Skibidi helicopter who looks like an astro toilet wannabe from the first leak for this episode. And it's not the only helicopter here because as Mecha turns to the left, we can see another helicopter flying in the distance. And now it's time to see the police mutant in action. And oh man, he's really capable of destroying people with his huge crescent we talked so much about in the previous video. Mecha tries to fry this freak with his plasmic shots, but he uses the shield which reminds me a lot of Titan Cameraman's shield from episode 20, and stays untouched. And by the way, this scene where the mutant gets closer to the POV covering with his shield, reminded me of this scene from the first part of episode 57, where Titan Cameraman walked the same way towards the infected Titan Speakerman. The prick literally crashes the POV's panel, and it looks like Mecha is about to go down, but then someone unexpected comes to his rescue. By the way, in this frame you can see the torn off pieces of Mecha's equipment, which are his hand, and a cannon. The Skibidi mutant watches past us in disbelief, and it's easy to understand him because when we turn around we see none other than the crazily upgraded camera strider and, oh my god, contrary to the Mecha scientist, I did not expect such a comeback at all. If you're a veteran subscriber of my channel, then you must be remembering how pitifully I treated camera striders in my past when they were featured in the earliest episodes of the series, because those things were practically useless and did little to no damage towards Skibidi toilets. And I mean there's no science in it because Skibidi could only be flushed in order to get destroyed back in the days, so the camera strider's shooting did no effect on them. But it seems like this big boy is about to prove how wrong we all were. Just take a look at it. He looks like a little brother of Titan Cameraman now with all this armory and blue lights. I'm really proud to even look at this thing. It's like I was its own engineer. The upgraded camera spider throws a flow of laser shots to the mutant, and he's fleeing in panic accompanied by the meme sound of metal pipe. 
But then, a worthy contender for our big boy appears out of the black mist, and this guy is clearly a reference towards the old man from the fame called Left 4 Dead. Compare the faces of these two together, and you'll definitely catch the resemblance. Plus, the red cap that he's wearing is a piece of American military uniform. This dude looks really confident and sassy, and oh man, don't you guys think that this big long cannon in the lower part of his body reminds you of something else? In any case, Spider's shots don't do any damage to him, so he decides to show our guy how it's actually done. But shame on him because he definitely underestimated our boy, so he gets punished for it immediately with this giant bright blue impulse coming from the core of Spider's body. So the old dude eats dust with two meme sounds at once. And by the way, did you catch it, how his big long cannon got torn off by an explosion in the first place? Too bad, my dude, considering that I can still call you a dude in such circumstances. The Mecha POV shows two thumbs up for the guy at once showing his greatest approval, and it seems like the battle is finally over, but it was actually a mistake, as there are still plenty of Skibidi left. One of them is getting blown up by the roll of toilet paper, aka the hidden bomb that Mecha throws at him and I am happy to see how my initial prediction about the purpose of these rolls of papers continues to prove to be true. So Mecha slowly approaches the Skibidi mutant who fled from Camera Spider before and takes his crescent, and it seems to me that fatality is incoming. But before that, I'd like to draw your attention to something else, and I'm really fascinated how I managed to find it. Do you see this vague figure in the further distance? It does look like a cameraman to me, but what kind of ordinary cameraman would turn out here without any equipment or weaponry? I believe this is one of the secret agent's apprentices, and this is Ether, one of the green-suited brothers, or maybe lucky cameraman, although it's pretty unlikely considering how he's in the Skibidi bunker at the moment getting well acquainted with his new alliance's comrades. And what do you guys think about who it might be? Write your theories in the comments below because I'll be really interested to read them. So the destruction of this sassy mutant is imminent, and as he feels that he shoves this pretty inappropriate gesture into our face, but then something totally mind-blowing happens next. The earth starts shaking, and no other than freaking G-Man in the flesh appears from the left, destroying all these electrical towers like trees. And oh my god, he is really terrifying from an ordinary cameraman's perspective. But despite all that, I have a pretty rational question. What the hell are you even doing here, dude? I thought you were supposed to follow the secret Skibidi cargo, whereas we remember the last super weapon of genius, Skibidi Scientist, was hidden. But then, as I kept watching this episode, I found an answer to this question, and I'm about to tell you everything really soon. He burst the powerful attack into Mecha Scientist's face, and it was so strong that our POV simply flew into the air and even got thrown over the camera spider. Watch for yourself! Meanwhile, the poor camera spider keeps shooting at G-Man with his blue lasers, and in response to that, G-Man makes a meme Dwayne Johnson face with one brow held high and gets ready to show his whole arsenal. Camera spider flies into the air, which looks really cool by the way, and gives G-Man the juicy shot of raw blue energy from the core. But unfortunately, the opponent reflects this shot easily with the activation of this powerful yellow shield. It reminded me of two things at once. Firstly, of Titan Cameraman's blue shield in episode 65, Ur-144, and secondly, of the yellow shield that Elite Clockman used in the beginning of episode 29 of Dom Studios' Skibidi Multiverse. And I am also really curious how G-Man manages to generate this shield. Maybe he does it with his glasses. Check out this suspicious yellow glow on them during that moment. I think that would be a really cool way to explain his new ability. Or maybe he produces this shield with the usage of his core, which is also yellow in color. So the Mecha's suit is broken, so he has to get out and move on his two hands, because in case you guys forgot, he has only half of his body left. So based on how low he is to the ground, I assume that he moves on his two hands as his suit is gone. Camera Spider is also not able to endure such a load of damage and falls down. He appeared in this episode with such epic just to get wasted afterwards. What a shame, my friends. In this regard, he really reminds me of Skibidi Mafia from the first part of episode 67, who appeared in the series after a long hiatus to simply get wasted literal seconds later. And something similar also happened to DJ Skibidi. And by the way, speaking of him, doesn't this guy in this frame remind you of anyone? Holy moly, dude, you're literally unbreakable. And he's not the only one to give us an unexpected comeback. You also hear the iconic he he sound belonging to Skibidi Michael Jackson that stole the spotlight in the first part of episode 69. 
I was also predicting him to come back at one point, and I'm really happy that this legendary scary dude is also alive. And by the way, it seems to me that this episode is one big fan service event as Boom showed to us the favorite characters of Skibidi Toilet fans, which is a really wholesome thing to do. And now it's time to go to the most heated part of the episode. Do you see how there are actually two cargo behind the G-Man's figure? While in episode 71 we saw only one, where I expect to see the secret creation of late Skibidi scientist. And there is also Skibidi Kleiner flying in the distance, and his appearance is pretty logical considering how we could also see him in episode 71. And besides, there is also this iconic Rizsaw mutant with katanas who was flirting with G-Man in episode 71 as well. You can spot him right here. Then G-Man is getting approached by Skibidi Welder, and they exchange a few words with each other. And as the little guy turns around and gets ready to leave, he stumbles upon someone quite unexpected. And oh my god, guys, just look how huge this Astro Toilet is in comparison with this Skibidi Welder. And I'm almost sure at this point that it is some kind of troll joke by Boom, because in my analysis of episode 71, I hurried a lot and made a mistake identifying this Skibidi Welder. I actually said that this is Astro Toilet, which was hilarious because look how different their sizes are. Fair enough, Boom, I really loved your sense of humor in here. He burns the poor welder like a little beetle and starts a conversation with G-Man, and both of them seem to be completely unbothered by the poor guy's elimination. To tell you honestly, guys, I managed to decipher what Astro Toilet has said in his first sentence only partly, and it sounded something like, you know, Commander. <laughs> And then he says, no one escapes justice. No one escapes justice. It's pretty difficult for me to explain for now what Astro Toilet meant by that, but I can assume that he mocks G-Man, who's seemingly trying to play a role of Skibidi Toilet's leader, and tells him that he's not actually worthy of that title, and the cowardly behavior of G-Man from the earlier episodes will get punished. In response to that, G-Man, in a complete silence, reveals all sort of weaponry that he has and gets ready to strike. And I'm not gonna lie, it looks sick as hell. But there's one important detail to that which makes the upcoming second part of the episode even more heated. Do you remember those two containers we saw just a couple of seconds earlier? Look closely at this particular frame when Astro says, no one escapes justice. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure as hell that this is one of the cargos being dropped in this exact moment. And it means one thing, the secret modified Skibidi soldier will get out of this container like Mr. X from Resident Evil 2 and will blow the heck out of this overly confident Skibidi toilet. We'll see how it goes. And that was all for today. Write in the comments below about how excited you are to see the second part of this episode. And be sure to subscribe to my channel not to miss my new videos. And also to my Discord where you can contact me directly and get lots of info for my subscribers only. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!